If all goes according to plan, a new supersonic aircraft could take its first flight as early as 2021. NASA's vision for a futuristic supersonic plane has been given the go-ahead by U.S. officials. Dubbed the Sun of Concord, this new jet would eliminate sonic booms that the original Concord created. It could cut travel time between New York and Paris in half, cutting it down to maybe three hours. For more on this, we're joined by aviation analyst Keith Mackey. He joins us from Ocala, Florida. Good to see you. Hello. Hi, Beverly. So tell me about this Sun of Concord in terms of the excitement, because we haven't really seen anything of its kind since the demise of the Concord itself. Correct. And actually, this is not a passenger-carrying airplane that's being uh, designed. It's an X-plane, an experimental airplane. And the purpose of it is to try to mitigate the effect of the sound boom when the aircraft goes supersonic. And the plan is to reduce the uh, sonic boom by a great deal. So if they're successful in doing that, they could then build supersonic transports that were capable of flying over land as well as over water. Remember, the Concorde was restricted to supersonic flight only over water. And that was a problem. It couldn't be used in very many places. Right. And so remind us, in terms of the sonic boom and the noise um, that it created and the reason it couldn't fly over land, is because it was Mach 2. Or they, like, tell me about the speed of the Concorde and then the speed of this one. OK, the Concorde went between 13 and 1,400 miles an hour. And this will probably do about the same. The next problem we have to solve is economics. Remember, the Concorde was a very uh, slim, narrow, fuselaged airplane. It could only carry 100 passengers. And the fare to ride the Concorde from New York to Paris or London was about $8,000. And that was about 30 times the price of an economy ticket between those two cities. So not many people could afford it, and it couldn't carry very many people. And that was $8,000 back then. Let me ask you about this, because as you say, it's an X-plane. I guess it's, uh, well, it's being called the Sun of Concord, but I, more technically, it's being called the Low Boom Flight Demonstrator. It still is going to cost a lot of money, but what does it say about the direction, say, the U.S. officials are willing to go now? Because we haven't seen monies going behind that before, well, not in a long time. No, we have not. Uh, there's not been a whole lot of demand for supersonic travel. I mean, it's a nice thing, but the, the British and the French governments ended up financing the Concorde project. Originally, the Concorde was supposed to cost $70 million. It ended up costing $1.5 billion. So there was a tremendous cost involved, and they only built, I think, 14 airplanes. So the, uh, the project was very expensive. And do you see, based on, you know, we're saying 2021 for the first experimental demonstration of this flight, potentially, do you see supersonic travel commercially down the road? Frankly, there'll be a very small demand for it because we can't use it on short trips. We can't fly from uh, uh, Toronto to mm -hmm. Montreal and use any supersonic capability at all. The amount of time the airplane needs to maneuver taking off and landing will be about the same as a commercial aircraft now because they'll have to interface with the normal aircraft patterns. So the only time we'll get the advantage of the supersonic speed is on a very long flight. And there are only a few select routes that will actually support, or possibly support, the extra costs that it will take to ride on such an airplane. Yeah, possibly is a good word in there. I really appreciate you coming on the program. Keith Mackey, thank you.